Okay, this is an interesting one. All these fuses are blowing and they keep blowing on this customer. So I'm just gonna test the underground mains and I'm gonna check that out. Okay, check out the readings. I've just got it between earth. So this is the neutral. This is the sub mains. Check out the sub mains, how dodged that is. Like it's just sticking out from the board there. Anyway, so yeah, neutral earth. Boom, dead short. Let's try this. There's two actives. It's these two cables here. Let's see if I can do this one handed. Shaky, shaky. So there we go. There's one active, dead short. The other one, dead short. So something catastrophic has happened to this underground cable. Gotta go work out what the hell's, where it is and what the hell's to do. Okay, I got my little tone tester out just between active and neutral on one of these phases. We go, it should go off his head. It's pretty sensitive, this thing. But I'm gonna see if we can find out where it goes. It's about a, oh, a few hundred meters, this, um, this run, but it goes across a little bridge. Okay, a bit of scenery here. That appears to be our one. There's another one behind below that. Ooh. So, I think I'm going to dig a hole. Swim around here. Mm. Okay, so I'm just going to do this end first. We got to pull this bad boy out. So, I'm just going to use um, my neutral as the sheet, pretending that this is um, not. Uh, uh, high voltage conductors, this is LP, so we're only going to measure it 3 kilovolts and this should work. So you disconnect my MEN from here and from the board down there. Okay, so there's my neutral, my active, my other active. So I basically joined them all together and this is now we've got to determine how much length there is, so we've got to get a trundle wheel out. Okay, check out this beast of a mega. It's massive, they compared my little trundle wheel. So I got it all hooked up, but before I start this up, I need to take a measurement from how far this goes, this mains goes, so I can punch it into this machine. So we can test it. And then I gotta use some um, pickets to try to align it, align it in. I've got another meter in this box here, but let's find out how many meters this run is first before we play it around with this. Okay, she's 140 meters this run. Now I gotta get this tool out, turn this thing on and see how we go. No, no USB device or firmware. The screen's pretty hard to see in the sunlight. Here we go. Stealth fault locator. Here we go. Okay, let me read the book, make sure I'm not fucking this up. Okay, here it is. It's just doing a, just doing a test, one kilovolt test. 200 milliamps, that's no good, is it? It's no good at all. So this is doing an IR test, then we've got a pre-location test, and then we've got a pinpoint test. It's pretty flash, this unit, in all honesty. It's got four minutes, so let's find out how it goes, eh? Pretty cool, fans going. She is chooching away. Shame you can't see the screen very well. Okay, I'm doing pre location now. You can see I'm putting my meters 140. Select my voltage. Do it at one, one kilovolt. Um, what's this other one? No cable selections. We just leave that on normal. Start it. Press the green button. Voltage current resistance. Here you go, got some results. About two kilo ohms. Here you go, still on positive, negative, positive, negative. Okay, test results are in. Oops. 
Okay, I missed it before. That doesn't seem right, my fault position. Negative. Hmm. Don't seem right. Okay, now I've got it on pinpointing. I've got this little device. I'm gonna see the phone. See, it's just pumping out the little current and voltage, little kilovolt, 200 milliamps. So I'm gonna see if I can find it where we suspect it might be. I don't know what this thing's doing. It's just been sitting here for ages. Double checked all my connections. They seem to be right. I don't know what the fuck's going on. So I, that's why I've asked for some help. See, it goes that way. Bring it this way. See the red goes that way. I reckon that's our mark there. I'm gonna try it further up. Further up, you can see it's really low. And it says to go that way. So I'll just try it further down near the house. So it looks like it's near the meter box, which is good. Okay, it's even less, 0 0.2, three volts. Pretty hard solar. Looks pretty unconclusive too, but yeah, that measurement's super, super low. Okay, not often you get a big boy mega into someone's walking road. Remove my links here. When I tested this end, and, um, try to locate the fault going back the other way, see if we have any success. I think we might have multiple faults here while we're getting um, that random location fault. So I don't have a digger here to demo that today, so I'm just doing a preliminary investigation. Oh, you can actually see the screen this time. So we're doing the pre-locator. Emergency switch off. Meters. 140, that's correct. Voltage. Let's just try it at five. Let's do it the same as I did before. Let's try it at one kilovolt. We'll just put one selection of cable. Start it. Press the green button and wait. You can hear it ramping up. This takes forever. Now, I was getting these funny readings before. I think we've got more than one fault here. But this little bad boy, I can inject, um, we can find it out like you've seen me do before. So, we might do that and find our first fault first, see if we've got any other ones going on. How much battery we got? 70%. I've used a fair bit. This was 100% before I was new. You know, I've had it between 1 kilo ohm and um, 2 kilo ohms. But yeah, she takes a fair time. Okay, that ohms went right down. Cool, so that's making me think that the cable is probably at the other end. I'm hoping it's going to tell us like 130 meters. That's what my guess is, but no. Nah. I'm not confident this pre-locator's pre-location's gonna work. I will just try it at lower voltage though too. Yeah, there we go. So still getting some funky readings. So let's just try it down at 500. Screen light. You probably don't need to watch this again. Yeah, we're right. Because we're because the fault is on all the conductors are bad, that's why we're getting this dodgy reading. So I'm gonna go back oops, back into this other menu. We're just gonna do the the pinpointing. So voltage, what have we got for voltage? Let's tick it out of a thousand. Current 30 milliamps is fine. Duty cycle, I was just doing yeah, one to two seconds, that should be fine. 
Press the green light. Cool, she's chooching away. Where's my little scale? There it is. Cool, so you can see it pumping the voltage down the line. Pretty cool little device, at least you can see it now. Couldn't see it outside before. So now I'm gonna go find my my fault. Okay, so I'm starting up near the switchboard. Got one stake in, got the other stake in. And that's what it refers to, that the fault is that way. So there's my line mark over there. I'm gonna go further back from it and see if I get the same result. Obviously my machine's sitting up in the subboard now. You go, X marks the spot. That's what we think. Okay, so, so for the fun of it, I've got myself another little test rig here. Mine the PPE. We're going to test this at low voltage, say 100 volts. But yeah, I just want to check out, can I get this uh, pre-location thing to work? So on this little menu here, it's this one here. <sighs> Safety circuit, f -ohm. Oh, I better plug it in, hey? Ooh. Okay, you really couldn't screw this up if you had to. Notice the arrow, point the arrow. It's keyed, so it only goes in one way. This earth here is actually going to my le legitimate earth path. So that's why um, the earthing is set up it is. But it is as per this one here. So let's do the test. I should get some good results on this one. Okay, there's my mistake. I hook this earth up. This is like um, your, your potential earth. This with cable here has also got an earth attached to it, but that's for the measuring. So it does like a three wire measurement on this device, but you know, I've got it working at the moment. Um, I'm just gonna punch in my meters, I guess. Before we had it at 140, I reckon this is probably like 20 meters of cable. Obviously we'll pump the voltage down. Save voltage. Oh, that's nice, it resets. So we'll just do it at 100 volts. There's puppy dogs right there. And give it a go, press the button. Yeah. 20 meters. There you go. So it actually detected the end of the circuit there. But what's with those weird readings? Oh, actually, no, they're pretty good readings. Because I was up to the yeah, look at these readings. These readings are a whole bunch, bunch different, aren't they? Interesting, very interesting. Okay, these results are excellent. This is exactly what I was looking for before. That's only because I'm using this, you know, fresh roller cable here. I only tested 100 volts too, so they get pretty handy me for the dog being All right, all my lack of PPE, all right? How's this for a money shot? There's my line, there's my join. Hey, how good's that? Excavator's done stuff for work and oh, look at that. She's burnt to a crisp. Cool, look at the reading now. We had it at 200 milliamps before, now it's sitting in microamps. At uh, a kilovolt, look at the current, beautiful. It's a cool bit of kit, this. So I got my new mains in. But I've realised I'm going to have to demeter this board. I can't use these old fuses. Luckily, they got a spare on site here, so I'm going to pull, have to pull all these meters off, pull the fuse again. And I'll show you what we're doing in here. Here's a resin kit. So basically, you've got little spaces there for the phases. You cut your conduit in there and it's meant to seal it up I'm meant to but this is where I'm gonna do it when your cables pull through you can see the old ones are just there we've got crimpers so let's make it happen okay so there's my new cables my old cables cut this is a little vessel that it's gonna live in we're gonna pour resin into it and I gotta put some inlines across it and um, I've got this, what they call glue heat shrink. So that did essentially make that waterproof. And then 
when we put the resin in, that'll that'll fucking really do it. So I'm gonna make sure I don't forget the heat sink, heat shrink. There's one crimp together. I'm just gotta put this heat shrink on. Oh, I need two hands. I'll gas it and I'll show you what the glue looks like as it comes out. Okay, so I squeeze this as it's still hot with my hands. Make sure it's all secure. But if you look carefully, you know where I've scorched it a bit. You can see the glue. And I've got my little stands in, taped up by the end. Ready to put the top on and get the resin going. Okay, I wasn't super happy with the fitment there, so I just stuffed in some more silicon, but that, the resin's gonna be in the most important spot. If I could do this one-handed, well, probably not. Okay, I made a mess, but you get the picture. She's full as a goog, and now it's just starting to set. You can see that, see it's slightly starting to change, and I've topped up the thing so many times. I'm just going to sit back and uh, let it set, and then we can fill the trench in. Okay, testing my joint now. It's hooked up to earth here. Let's check out one phase. Well, you can't see that there. That's probably better. And it's really clean. Oh, and there's up a bit, but it's so 500 volts, so that's 10 megs, so it's definitely a pass. And the other phase, it's going way down. So in there, maybe a neutral. I'm gonna go join um, neutral earth in the board because obviously one of these is a black cable and I've got to put some heat shrink on it. You know what? I thought about this main switch and shit. I'm just going to put two three poles side by side. This is now redundant. So are these three meters, but looking at it, I've got to change that heat shrink, that neutral, and it's just not worth my time. It's Friday and it's bloody New Year's Eve. <laughs> so a quick way I worked out um, polarity because I've got two phases and a neutral here. I've got it hooked up to earth. I joined the earth back up in the subboard with my neutral. You see there, it jumps, it dances, but it's not up there. But this one here, bang, zero. So we know that one there needs a bit of heat shrink. They ended up getting a new main switch, new house. A new bit of mains there, ignore that bit of black, didn't have enough heat shrink. And I've given them shit loads of sub mains. I disconnected these meters up here, these three, because they're redundant. Had to break the seal on these two to extend this wiring. This is just set up the old school way. There's no meter isolation link, and no um, meter neutrals. They're all just soldered. So let's go turn on the house. Okay, so 415 coming in the top here. 423. Just right down to earth, 240. 245, what's the other one? 240, so we can turn this main switch on now. We can turn on all the circuits. One of them didn't mega so well, but we're just gonna see if the safety switch is sold up. So it appears that it's all working. Sweet, that's all done, labeled up. Still need to do this meter boring, but anyway, I'll leave it for another day.